welcome back to the boathouse. This week, the first bulkhead gets varnished and installed, and then work begins on the saloon and the Fort Peak. So Steve has got this really cool total boat system that I haven't worked with before, but is really nice to use. Um, so it consisted of two sealer coats, which we did yesterday, with a product from the company. Um, and today, this is the second coat of this is the first coat of varnish on this, second coat of varnish on this side. Second coat of varnish on this side. Um, so the total boat system, we're using what, gleam, total boat gleam varnish. Uh, the primer goes on and we rolled and tipped that. That seems to work really nice. Um, just to roll on the product and tip out the bubbles. But for the varnish itself, we're using this really nice brush to just apply. And then again, a foam brush. It's nice to just go back in and tip it out, making sure to always work back into the stuff I've already done. Always lets you keep a wet edge. With the bulkheads already being made out of panels, it's really nice to be able to remember where all of my work starts and ends, uh, especially as you guys can probably see, it's getting harder and harder to tell where there is and is not new varnish, except of course when there's bugs stuck in it. So why we're doing this process with the two sealer coats and then the two coats of varnish um, mostly because that's what the product says to do, always read your cans. People at Total Boat put a lot of like research into this, so that's what their process does. You fill the pores with the sealer coat, and that bonds deep into the wood. It flows into the wood. It's thinner. Um, and with two coats of that bonded to itself with a hot coat, you get a really nice surface that penetrates the top layer of the wood and prepares the surface for a nice bonding adhesion to the coats of varnish that we're doing now. So it's all really to just maximize both protection of the wood and make sure it all stays together. Oh. So... No scratches. No scratches. I'll be a shipwright by the time this boat is gone. That's right. Okay. Alright, we can rest it for a second. Alright, ready when you're ready. Are we ready? I think we are. Alright, so we're gonna go up and straight down. You ready? Yep. Come down, see you. Launch the bolts. The varnish makes it easy to like slide your camera through. This is so much easier than last time, see? Yeah, I know. Ooh, I'm gonna have to ch cut the corner off the trim, I think. Yeah, I got it. The saw's coming up. Let's see if you get to it. This one, please. Here's your pencil. Not for sure. Okay. Gotta go starboard. Yep. Alright, then just set it on it. Cool. Okay, let's check out. I might have to nip a little bit more off, but. Great. I think that did it. Excellent. Okay. Nice. Oh, it looks great. 
great come up here, Steve. Yeah, right, looks, do you have a, looks a, awful. Yeah, yeah. Totally terrible. Totally terrible. Okay. Now we've got to clamp it. I'm really happy with how this bulkhead came out. Uh, I think it looks really good. And uh, I even like the, the defects from Victoria. It's, uh, I don't know, it gives the wood character, gives it history. It's gonna kind of be a, a neat mishmash of old and new, which I really like. So the next step here is going to be to get this mocked up. Uh, the mock-up that we did earlier was essentially just a proof-of-concept mock-up. So nothing was meant to be super terribly accurate. It was just meant to visually, physically fill the space and give an idea of what we really had to work with. Because uh, trying to conceptualize in this space that's narrow down below and wide up higher, but with the, uh, the deck here, it's... Uh, it's complicated to, to visualize it all. So what I wanna get done now is just work on getting this section mocked up really well so that when Carolyn gets back, I can say, you know, this is what I want you to build and she can get to it. And then I can jump in the four peak and get to work up there. And there's a few things that we're kinda playing with here. So one is the higher this bunk comes up, the deeper it can be so the more this comes up, the more we can bring it over, uh, which gives us more floor space. But that also reduces the head space we have under the deck beams and increases the bunk height. So sitting at the bunk would start to become uncomfortable. Uh, the lower we go, which will get more comfortable sitting, means that we come farther into the boat um, <clears throat> and we get narrower width because this, you know, the planking comes down. So it's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. And I really wanted to see what it would be like with um, Victoria's table in here. And I didn't really want to carry the table back in. We did that once and it's not light. So I took the part of the box that the diesel had come into. That's why it says Nanny Diesel on there. And just whipped up a really quick facsimile so we can see what it's like with the tapes up. And this is just a packing tape hinge that I put on here. Uh, and then we can also leave this in the boat. So as we start to work and fit, we can actually have a work surface in here to put tools and stuff on, which would be nice. Cause right now we've just been putting them on the sole. And I've got the cardboard here, which is super, super roughly where the head's going to be. We're still waiting on the head to arrive. We ordered it many months ago, but due to COVID and everything else, it hasn't come. Um, so as soon as that comes, we can do like the final mock-up there. But in the interim, I'm gonna keep working in here. So I think I'm happy with this. Uh, I'll take a look at it a little later tonight, tomorrow, and keep running it over in my head and making sure that this is actually where we want it to be. But Carolyn should be able to get right to work on this tomorrow and she can see where everything needs to be. So I'm gonna grab some tools and some equipment and some pattern stuff and climb up in the four peak and start mocking that up uh, so that I can start working on that. Okay. That's the first step of the puzzle back here. Very first step. 
So you gotta remember through all of this that the mast is gonna have to come through here and it's gonna actually be a little bit bigger. I think this is a six inch and it's actually gonna be eight inch. Um, it's not a gigantic difference, but this will be close enough to, to know what's going on. Cause we're not gonna wanna build the bunks like right up against the mast. We're gonna wanna live it, give it a little bit of wiggle room anyways. had one of the Victoria's mahogany panels in here and I wanted it to fit but it just didn't quite fit. The way the doors were lined out on that panel that there was no way to install it without one of the doors bumping up against the mast and you not really being able to open it and I thought that that would be less than ideal. So that led to making a panel for here and seeing if we have some mahogany doors that would fit. Thankfully, we have quite a selection of mahogany doors, so not very worried about that part. Um, but we do have to build a whole kind of frame and panel that'll go in here and hold those doors. So as I was messing around with this, um, I realized that having the extra foot room down here would be really nice, and having this panel make an angle around the mast would be really great. So we've got the mast mock-up here, just a piece of pipe wedged in place. And I've got a piece of <clears throat> plywood here that you can keep the bunks away from the mast a little bit. Because we want some wiggle room. We don't want it to be right up against it. And then I got the level on here, so you can make sure it's level. And then on this end, I could just move that screw around wherever I needed it to be, because the screw's not long enough to pierce that two by eight. Uh, and that let me figure out the layup in here pretty easily. So with the decision to, uh, to make a panel that goes in here and go find some doors from Victoria to hopefully fit, the next decision is what wood to make those frames out of. So we have oak, we have locusts, uh, we could do it out of sugar maple, we could do it out of cherry, there's a lot of options. And sometimes I get a little tired of making all of these decisions. So I asked Robin what she would like in the four peak or what she thought would look good. So I said that we had the oak bulkhead and we had the mahogany bulkhead and what frame would go well with that and the mahogany doors. And she thought that oak would look good and that would keep it to oak and mahogany in the four peak. That sounds good to me. So I went and scrounged up a bunch of oak offcuts uh, and planed them up and jointed them, which was super weird using a joiner. We haven't had to make anything flat and straight in a long time. Uh, and I started building the panels that are gonna go in here and hold those mahogany doors. So let's go top side and check that out. It took me a few minutes to remember how to work with straight and flat things, to use things like table saws and joiners. Uh, very, very little of the build at this point has been able to use any of that kind of stuff because everything's bent and curved and crooked. Um, so it was really great to be able to get into uh, some actual honest to God cabinetry work. Uh, so a couple things that you might notice. The first is that there is a lot of slop in the fit of the door and that is done on purpose. So when we got Victoria, uh, there were a lot of locker doors that were completely swollen shut. Uh, so you couldn't open them. Some of them have damage from where they've been yanked open. So we wanted to make sure that there was a significant amount of play and I might even open this up just a little bit more uh, so that the door has plenty of room. I would much, much rather the door have a bit of reveal around it uh, than have the door get stuck. Uh, and if you notice on the inside, I just remove the material here so that the door has a nice landing spot on the top and bottom so that it can't get pushed in. And then these just have a really simple, quick and dirty mortise and tenon with a little bit of epoxy to hold it in place. And that will end up being the first panel. So this will go against the bulkhead and the main mast will be right here. We'll make another little piece that goes behind it. And then the next step is to make the really long panel with the other lockers built into that. There's a whole bunch of different ways to go about doing this. Uh, some people cut the mortises and the tenons, the tenons and the mortises, mark out one part than the other. 
Uh, but what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to start by marking out the 10 ends on two of the vertical pieces. And then we'll use that to figure out exactly where the 10 ends need to land on the bottom of them. That'll get cut out. Uh, and then we'll figure out where the mortises land last. So to fit in the boat and to match this other panel, we need to make it 28 and a half inches. So if we line up our tenon, that's where our shoulder is going to get cut. And we come here. And this has got to get pulled out to 28 and a half. Check this thing. Cool. So we want our shoulder to land right there. I think this thing is a is an inch. Yep, perfect. So this middle part here will be our tenon. That will be waste. The end will be waste. And now this board is literally just going to become a mirror image of this one. All right. Now we just have to cut the waist off and cut the two tenons, and then we'll figure out exactly where they want to land widthwise, uh, and we'll lay this door out. And the very last thing that we'll do once this frame is all glued up is we'll cut a rebate where the top of the door and the bottom of the door meet these top and bottom frames. Uh, so we have a bit of wiggle room with where those doors will land. So when we put these styles in, all we really have to worry about is widthwise. So let me grab some eyes <clears throat> and some ears and a mask, and we'll cut these on the chop saw, and then we'll go cut the tenons downstairs in the garage with the table saw. So I have the stable saw set up from yesterday already. So the blade is one inch from the fence. This side of the blade is one inch from the fence. So I can use that to cut the tenons. And it's the correct depth. I think it's 3 eighths of an inch to give us a half inch thick tenon. So I'm just going to slide this against the fence, use this, and just run it through and churn all of this into mincemeat for both sides. And uh, then we can take it in and clean it up with the chisel. So these are the two most important cuts. We can register the chisel on here, and we know how deep. So at this point, we can remove this material accurately. And however many saw cuts we make just means less chiseling. Um, so we can cut this until it's all completely gone, which if we had a dado blade in here and it was wider, would make a lot of sense. Uh, what we're going to do is just make a few cuts, and it'll clean up real easy with the chisel.
Now, I am not going to be picky really about cutting these because when we drill the mortises, the ends are going to be rounded and we're going to end up rounding all these over and it doesn't really matter all that much. So I'm just going to cut across here by eye. <laughs> So there's what we're looking for for the tenon. So that's the long part that'll get glued. That's the part that will float and register, but allow the board to move and contract. And that's the part that we want removed so that when we trim it and cut the angle to fit the other panel, we won't be cutting into the tenon. Seems good, assuming that all of this is only going to get tighter because everything's going to swell when we get near the water. We can go through and we can mark where the tenons land. Okay, I have the marking gauge here set to what we need to remove from either side. Just drag that over the line. to take off and the mark across the top and the side show me where we need to transition from a short tenon to a long tenon. I'm going to use the Forstner bit in the drill press to drill out these tenons and the first thing is pull this down and I'm going to adjust my setting here and I'm going to make it at two inches and that way I know that when I hit two, I'm just starting to drill and I can follow this around and make all of these the same depth. So I'm going to start with the one inch tenons. So we come down to two and we start to cut. Half inch. Three quarters. One.
Awesome. So I think those just need a little bit more cleaning up. It feels like they're getting tight at the shoulders, uh, but a couple passes and that should be good. And then those will get fit like that. So we get these lined up and then I'll trace the bottom edge, I'll trace the top edge, and I'll remove that like I did on the other one. So that'll come out of the corner here. And then these will sit down into it and the remaining lip on the top and the bottom will be what the doors close against. And other than a little more trimming to get these to sit, because we don't really want to be clamping them together. We want just very light pressure and for them to snug in and we're going to epoxy the long tenons and that will for sure hold them. Uh, so take this apart, do a little bit more work there, close it up, and then I've got to figure out exactly where the next panels are going to go and start building up the vertical one. But it's the same process as this. Just figure out what the spacing is, what the boards look like, and you can use the same tools with the same setup and make some more mortise and tenons. So these are the neighbors. You guys live right down the road. Hi. And uh, they stop by from time to time to inspect the progress. And what do you think? I'm down here. You're down there. Mm. Oh, did you open the hatch? Yeah. Oh, like it always you. is. Hi, now I see you. It looks like it always is, really? Well, in terms of the amazingness, yeah. Dad. Yeah. In terms of the progress? Yes. No. But I thought you were talking amazing. Amazingness. <laughs> well, I guess a few times it has gotten a bit amazinger. I have to admit, this is one of the times that got awesomer. 